If there's one way to grab the attention of your viewer, it's through animation. There's something magical when a tiny model comes to life with some movement, and adding an operating oil pump like this is a fantastic way to add interest, intrigue, and a sense of purpose to your model. So let's not waste any more time and get started building. The kit is a Walters HO scale oil pump. To make the pump operate, you'll also need the motorizing kit that comes separately. At first glance, there really isn't much to building this kit. It only has roughly 25 parts that make up the main pump structure. Therefore, the instructions are quite straightforward. Here's a list of the tools you'll probably need. However, as a bare minimum, you could probably get away with a sharp hobby knife, some plastic cement, and a plastic safe lubricant if you plan on motorizing it. There's a lot of repeated steps in this build, so I'll take you through a brief description of the steps and move on so that you don't have to watch me for three hours cutting and gluing plastic together. To tidy up the parts, I use a seam scraper. By dragging the edge along the seam, it will scrape away the obvious join line in the plastic and give a much nicer finish. Additionally, to neaten up the model, I use some plastic filler to fill in any imperfections and smooth them off, like the ejector pin marks from the molding process. Unfortunately, this model had a missing gear shaft, but luckily I had some styrene rod that was a close match, so I was able to drill out the remaining old shaft and replace it with some styrene tube. Hopefully this won't be a problem for you, but at least you'll know it's a relatively easy fix if you do find this problem. Something you'll commonly see through my builds, especially kits like this that have moving parts, is I test fit the parts before gluing just to make sure it all fits correctly and moves freely. Here's another example of why this is important. The counterbalance weight was catching on the belt guard. Another easy fix by shaving down the spacer on the mounting pin, however it's something to watch out for. Now the separate parts can be glued. Just make sure to avoid gluing any parts that need to move. Each part is primed and painted. To me a surface primer is great for small plastic models like this. To ensure smooth running of the moving parts, make sure to remove excess paint from the plastic parts that touch or rub against each other. I also use a very small amount of plastic safe lubricant to keep everything running smooth. The gearbox can be screwed together. The opening at the base is masked to prevent paint getting onto the gears. To help hide the screws, they are covered with multi-fill. This stuff is great for bigger patch jobs because it doesn't shrink and can be applied quite thick if needed. Once dry, excess is filed away. There's no secret to painting. You can pretty much paint them any color you like. I really like the orange and gray look, so that's what I went for on this model. I didn't have a nice dull orange, so I mixed up my own to get a nice dull faded color. It's thinned down so that I can apply it more smoothly using the airbrush. I did the same for the grey colour, mixing two different colours to get the look I was after. Rust effects are applied using a sponge to get a rough textured look. I mostly used Vallejo rust with a couple of spots of light rust and some weathering powders. You can also join some of these spots of rust together with a brush to create bigger areas of rust. As for the base, it's painted a cement colour using a very low pressure on the airbrush. This results in a speckled flow of paint simulating the tiny rocks and various colours you typically find in cement. It gets tied together with a light misting of the base colour. Now we can finally assemble the pump. Again, make sure to remove unwanted paint so the moving parts can move freely. The kit also comes with some decals. I decided to put one on the side of the belt guard. There's a lot of different ways of attaching decals. For this build, I'm simply soaking the decal in a small amount of Humbrol decal fix. You really don't need much at all for a small piece like this. Once the decal is able to move from the backing sheet, I slide it onto the model. You've got a little bit of a working time, so take your time to ensure you get it placed just right and then leave it to dry. 
the motor mount is glued onto the base. Additionally, I added some styrene supports so that I can sit the model down flat without it falling over. The kit comes with some screws to mount the motor, which I lost, so I ended up drilling a slightly larger hole so that I could fit a 3mm bolt. I did find that with both bolts holding the motor, it caused the motor to press slightly tight against the bottom gear, causing the motion of the oil pump to be a bit jerky. So I just used one bolt and it fixed the problem. Now for the shadow box. I had an idea in mind and after drawing it I started measuring and cutting. I wanted it to look a little bit unique so I added curved sides. These curved sides have given me some ideas for future builds like this as well. Foam is used to build up the base. That way I can carve into the foam and have raised areas as well as dips and valleys. It also allows me to work on the model without the shadow box getting in the way. Once the model is finished, I can just slide it into position inside the shadow box. The scenic elements are positioned and I draw features like roads onto the foam. A hole needs to be cut to allow the oil pump mechanism to slot into the foam. The hole is cut just big enough for the motor to fit through while also allowing the cement base to sit flat on top of the foam. The hole will also need to be cut into the plywood. Now the rest of the shadow box can be assembled, glued and nailed together. Another mistake, I installed the plywood base section back to front so I had to recut the hole for the oil pump mechanism, but at least again it's an easy fix. The lighting for the shadow box is LED strip lighting. I used a mix of white and warm white LEDs to get a nice natural sunlight colour. The diorama also has an on and off switch for the lights and a push button for the oil pump. All of the wiring is hot glued onto the back of the shadow box. Because it's all battery powered I made sure it had easy access so that the batteries can easily be changed when needed. A basic timer module kit from JCAR is used to power the oil pump. So when the push button is pressed the pump will run for a set period. It too is hot glued to the rear along with all the other electronics. The time can be adjusted on the back by simply adjusting it using a screwdriver. It can be changed from a few seconds up to about 4 minutes. You can also adjust the speed of the oil pump by varying the voltage. Here I'm using 6 volts to get a nice slow pump speed. The rest of the detail like a drainage ditch and pipes are mapped onto the foam. For areas that dip below the surface, I'm using a freehand router from the Hotwire Foam Factory. It's great because the shape of the wire can be adjusted to cut just what you need. Landform is built up using Sculpted Modeling Mix. This stuff is one of my most used products. It makes creating landforms with undulations and various textures really easy. Before applying the plaster, I make sure to roughen the surface of the foam so the plaster has something to stick to. Dry plaster tends to pull away from the smooth foam quite easily. I spread out the plaster over the entire diorama. It's built up in areas just enough to create a bit of variety and avoid having a completely flat surface. The block of wood is used as a mask to cover the hole. The block is cut perfectly to match the length and width of the oil pump base. The plaster gets worked continually as it starts to set. While it's still soft, I press the oil tanks into the plaster. That way they will look embedded into the scenery. After about 20 minutes, the plaster will start to firm up. About now is a good time to remove the oil tanks, leaving behind their impressions. I also remove the wood by tapping it from the bottom. I find as the plaster cures, it tends to warp especially if it's only being supported by a thin sheet of foam. So to help, I placed it into the shadow box and placed some weights on it to hold it flat as the plaster dries. Now for the 3D printed details. These were all printed on the Nova 3D Bene 4 Mono 3D printer. A printer like this is ideal for making fine detail prints, which is especially important for scale modeling. Once printed, the models are treated like any other plastic model. 
They can be primed, painted and weathered using your preferred techniques. I did go just a little bit heavy with the weathering on these tanks, so while the camera was off, I ended up repainting them. I also printed out some small step over platforms, as well as some pipe junctions that are connected with styrene rod and weathered to look old and used. As with all my models, dirt texturing is added. To make the dirt, I mixed backyard sifted dirt with grout. In this case, I used one part dirt to one part tumbleweed grout. It looks quite light right now, but once the glue is used to seal the dirt, it will dry a much darker brown. Before applying the dirt, I missed some brown paint over the plaster. This helps hide the white plaster just in case we miss any spots of dirt. That way it won't be so obvious. Because there are subtle hills on the model, I miss the base with some glue prior to applying the dirt. This will ensure the dirt sticks to the sloping areas. Now dirt can be sprinkled across the surface covering the entire model. To permanently fix the dirt, I missed isopropyl alcohol followed by scenic glue. The alcohol helps ensure the glue soaks right down into the fine dirt layer, giving it a good strong hold. Once dry, I add the stormwater pipes. I did these as an afterthought, so I had to carve out a hole into the plaster for them. After they're painted and glued, I fill around them with some coarse dirt, helping them blend in with the surrounding scenery. More coarse dirt mixture is sprinkled around the rest of the diorama, building up various levels of texture, making sure not to apply the coarse dirt on the road areas. That layer can be further blended with another layer of fine dirt. This will help bed in the larger rocks so they don't look like they're floating over the ground. For the road, I'm using a lighter dirt. This is a similar grout dirt combination. However, I'm using two parts travertine grout and one part dirt. This gives a slightly lighter color, simulating the appearance that it is traveled on more regularly. Now for static grass. I'm using the Woodland Scenic Static King. The hopper is filled with a variety of four and six millimeter grass. I want to simulate dry grass, something you might see in midsummer. Not completely straw-like, but it's on its way. The grass is very simple to apply. Static tack is stippled across anywhere you want grass. I'm deliberately leaving patches of dirt so the grass looks more wild and unkept. Now the static king is turned on, the grounding wire is held close to the glue and the hopper is tipped over and shaken about 5 centimeters above the surface. Like magic, the grass falls from the hopper and stands upright in the glue. Excess is vacuumed up using a stocking over the end so the excess can be collected and used on other areas of the model. This process is repeated across the model until you achieve the desired look. More colour is added with some fine and coarse turf. I'm only using the burnt grass colour. I'm avoiding any greens that are too vibrant. Burnt grass seems to be a nice dull green, good for a late summer scene. From memory, I think this is the oak scatter from Tremendous Scenics in the UK. I've had it for a very long time though. It looks great for leaves on the coarse foam. Again, more alcohol and glue is applied to fix it in place. Now the scenic details can be permanently glued in place. I created some foam stilts for the diorama so I could mount the oil pump. To hold it up flush with the surface, I used both hobby tack glue as well as some hot glue. The hot glue hardens after a few seconds, so I could press the oil pump into position and let it go, knowing it wasn't going to move while the hobby tack glue dried. The small gap around the edges are filled with dirt texture. A brush or a finger is enough to smooth it over and get a nice seamless blend. It will need to be fixed down with some alcohol and glue just like what was done previously. If the glue isn't soaking in, you may find misting some alcohol will help. Just be sure to avoid getting it over the model, especially if you've already applied weathering powder, as it will wash it off pretty fast. The pipe work can be attached now. Super glue should be enough to hold it in place. 
I also added the step overs with a few drops of super tack glue. A pretty common sight around oil pumps is oil. So I make sure to add some oil spillage and dirty grimy weathering effects around the base of the pump as well as the driving mechanism. If you've watched any of my other tutorials, you'll be familiar with the road weathering process. Some yellow pastel is shaved down into a powder. Then using a soft brush, small amounts of pastel are dusted over the surface, gradually building up the colour until you get the desired look. The last scenic detail to add are some small trees. They are a mix of fine leaf foliage and some homemade sea foam trees using knock leaves for foliage. To finish the shadow box, the nail holes are tidied up with some filler. After sanding I took the frame outside and gave it a coat of semi-gloss black paint. The backdrop is one of my own images. It's actually available to patrons at the scenery expert support level. I ended up using the grain bin 1 image and combined it with the foreground of the summer grass 5 image using Photoshop. I also cut the image into sections so that each part can be printed on an A4 piece of paper. Once printed the images are mounted onto a piece of plastic sheet. Each sheet is cut to size so it fits perfectly in the shadow box and it's sanded to roughen the surface slightly giving the spray adhesive a better hold. I also sprayed the sheet white. To mount the image I first joined the two sheets that make up the rear wall with a strip of tape. Next it's positioned on the plastic backing sheet and one edge has spray adhesive applied. The backdrop paper is then pressed into the glue and a roller used to help press it down and work out any bubbles. Now the opposite side is lifted, spray adhesive applied and then working back in the other direction, the roller is used to gradually press the backdrop onto the plastic backing sheet. While I do this, I'll also mention that I changed the colour of the grass in Photoshop to better match the static grass I used on the model. That way it's hard to spot where the actual model ends and the backdrop begins. The backdrop is mounted using hot glue. I chose hot glue so that if I need to in the future I can remove the backdrop and change it. The top uses the same polypropylene sheet sanded to help diffuse the light from the LEDs. This too is hot glued into the shadow box frame. You can see with the light panel on and the LEDs on it gives off a very nice amount of light that is soft and a good natural colour. A small nut is used to help put tension on the polished rod and wire line of the oil pump. Initially the diorama didn't quite fit now that the backdrop was in, however all it needed was a light sanding along the edges and it fit like a glove. The small holes on the bottom are for gluing. Small drops of hot glue are applied here. This way I still have the ability to remove the glue and remove the model if needed in the future. Now we just need to connect the wire and watch the model come to life. This model was so much fun to build and even more fun to look at. I hope you too enjoy adding animations to your model layouts and dioramas as well. Cheers and thanks for watching.